4, 2008, a hit and run driver nearly took my life and I almost killed my dog. I was walking my dog through the crosswalk when the hit and run driver blew through the intersection and sped towards me. I didn't have too much time to think, so I just reacted, planted one leg, shoved my dog out of the way with the other leg. Driver hit me in the knee, rolled up on the hood, landed on my head. Concussion, internal bleeding, torn ACL, torn MCL, procedures, surgeries, you name it. Before the accident, everything was so clear to me. I had just graduated from USD with a Master of Science in Real Estate five days before the accident. In school, I was able to launch a fully funded private investment company, and we were getting a 10% return on our investment when everyone else was losing money. I was also being mentored by a prominent real estate broker, doing well at a nationally renowned commercial real estate firm. But something happens to you when you face a near-death experience. You start to question everything in life. You start to think, is what I'm doing really important? Is money really important? Are the things I worry about on a daily basis really important? Would I be doing today what I'm doing if I didn't know tomorrow was coming? And those thoughts were like little seeds that were planted in the back of my mind. There's me in the hospital. There's me being successful. There's the seeds. <laughs> but I'm like a lot of you students out there, and I was loaded with student loan debt. Had to pay rent, wanted to look successful in the eyes of my peers. So I continued on with real estate. I continued on with my private investment company. I continued getting awards for commercial real estate, doing big deals, making everyone happy, society feeling good. But those little seeds took root. They started becoming bigger plants. One day, I sat down in my room with a bunch of markers and sticky notes all over the floor, and I just wrote down everything I could think of when I asked myself the questions, what would I do if money didn't matter? What would I do if I could do anything in life? What would I do if there was no limitation to what could be accomplished? Three things kept coming up. Number one, I'd work with dogs all day. Dogs represent love, friendship, loyalty, excitement. It doesn't matter if you've been gone for 10 seconds. You walk through that door and your dog's tail's shaking and it's the most exciting thing in the world to see you. I'd also like to lead a team. In college, I played basketball. I was the team captain all four years. When I was here at USD, I was the graduate president. I was also president of National Association of Industrial Properties and ULI groups. I'd also want to be an entrepreneur. It's in my blood. It's in my core. It is who I am. The problem is, how do you make money leading a team of people to play with dogs all day? It, it just <laughs> didn't seem like a reality. So I wrote those dreams down, and they just kind of sat there. Then one day, I saw a news article. Somebody had been hit in the same exact intersection I was hit in, which was Claremont Mesa Boulevard in Luna, right here in Claremont, they died. It was like a slap in the face. And it gave me the determination I needed to launch my first pet company. And I had a lot of resistance. People were asking me, didn't you spend your whole life training real estate? Didn't you just spend a bunch of time and money on a master's degree? Aren't you successful? You're making all this money. You're finally receiving some of the the payoff of all the work you've put in, you're just gonna throw that away to go pursue an industry you know nothing about? Yeah, it felt right. So, I launched my first company called Pup Protector. We made LED collars and leashes for dogs that would light up at night so you, other people wouldn't get hit by cars. It was going pretty well. We sold thousands of collars and thousands of leashes. We were in different retailers, we had a kiosk, we got on the Today Show, but we weren't making money, and I was burning through my savings. It got to the point where I had to cash out all my retirement plans, take a huge tax hit, and I was going broke. I had to close the company down. Was everyone right? 
did I make a huge mistake? Did I just throw my future away? Then I got a call from the founder of PetSmart, and he said, long story short, let's start a company together. I want you to come with me, and I want to help other pet entrepreneurs launch their company. I want you to teach them all the things you went through and all the things you learned in your pup protector experience. Okay. Founder of PetSmart? How's this thing going to lose? I, I'm in pretty good shape. Well, a year and a half later, we had to close that company down, too. <laughs> so three and a half years into my pet industry experience, jumping out of real estate, I've now failed at two companies. I'm starting to really have a bunch of self-doubt and starting to believe all the people who are saying, you made the wrong move. What I should have been doing is focusing on the fact that over those three and a half years, I met a lot of good connections. I gained a lot of knowledge. My foundation of knowledge in the pet industry was something that laid the foundation of success moving forward. And on January 1st, 2016, I put together an investment group and we acquired a company called Bullybone. I brought along a manufacturing genius that I met through Pup Protector, or excuse me, a marketing genius that I met through Pup Protector and a manufacturing genius that I met through Pet Industry Experts. In 2015, Bullybone did 50,000 in sales. In 2016, after I put the team in place and acquired the company, we did just under a million. This year in 2017, we're gonna do close to five million. I'm leading the team of my dreams. I'm working with dogs all day, and I'm working for myself as an entrepreneur. It took a traumatic event for me to sit down and define what my dream life would look like. And I encourage everyone here to sit down and define what your dream life would look like too. Because if you don't do that and you don't define what it is, you'll never know if you're on the right path to get there. Like I said, I had to get hit by a car to do this little exercise, and I'm not encouraging any of you to get hit by a car. All I'm saying is, if you don't sit down and write your dreams out, you're gonna get hit by a car. Thank you.